Oh, the bitter irony. You managed to produce a series of R-rated, graphically gory and violent films full of very adult themes and situations that have developed a dedicated fan following who appreciate the completely non-mainstream approach to your production and marketing. Unfortunately, you've achieved the maximum reach possible within the adult audience. But there's definitely something there, something people are connecting with beyond the disturbing imagery and twisted humor. If there's nowhere to go with the adult market, maybe it's time to see what the kids think. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Toxic Crusaders. Toxic Crusaders is a 1991 animated series and action figure line based on a series of films produced by Troma Entertainment. First released in the United States in 1984, The Toxic Avenger was written by Lloyd Kaufman and Joe Ritter, directed by Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Herz. Hertz, Herz. It's the story of Melvin Junko, a stereotypically nerdy young man, a social outcast, taunted, teased, bullied, cursed to live a life separate from all the beautiful, smart, successful, absolutely horrible people. Melvin accidentally dives into a barrel of toxic waste to escape a mob of beautiful, horrible people, which transforms him into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. At which point he then avenges himself against the various tormentors of his previous life and also begins a crusade against the machines of production that resulted in the toxic waste that made him the avenging monster that he is. That's the PG pitch. The films are much more graphic and totally inappropriate for anyone under 18. It absolutely deserves its R rating, but to be fair, at its core, it does have a very compassionate, pro-Earth message of conservation and seeing people for who they really are on the inside. There is a good heart within the splattery graphic violence and dark humor. Two sequels to Toxic Avenger were released in 1989, intended to be one sequel, but they ended up with so, so much great stuff that they just couldn't leave it on the cutting room floor. One intended movie became two. By 1990, Lloyd Kaufman knew that the film series had likely reached a saturation point. The audience wasn't going to get any bigger unless it got younger. The only way to reach a larger audience was to find a way to put a lot less emphasis on the harsher parts of the mythology and let people see the Toxic Avenger through a softer lens. Let people see that big heart and good soul amidst cartoon violence instead of actual graphic blood and guts violence. <laughs> Troma Entertainment reached out to the same folks who had helped bring Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to kids' TV screens and rebranded the Toxic Avenger as a team of mutated heroes called Toxic Crusaders. They even picked up writer Chuck Lorre, the guy responsible for the actual TMNT theme song, to write a bunch of episodes and co-write the Toxic Crusaders theme, the very Toxic Crusaders theme that has been stuck in my head for 25 years. In reality, if Toxic Crusaders had been conceived from the beginning for that younger audience, it actually has a lot in common with the Ninja Turtles. Both were mutated by toxic goo, the result of an industry with no regard for the byproduct of their quest for profits over people. Both were granted powers by that toxic waste and used that power to fight back against the people responsible for creating it in the first place. Both were social outcasts due to the way they looked physically, even though on the inside, they were good characters seeking to do the right thing, to protect other people from becoming monsters like them. And like a lot of other 90s products for kids, Toxic Crusaders was able to meet the stringent federal guidelines requiring educational content in children's programming by tapping into the ecological awareness trends of the era. 13 episodes were produced to help promote a new line of action figures by Playmates, yet the same Playmates who were already rolling with their Ninja Turtles line. Toxic Crusaders were so similar to the Turtles design that one would not be blamed if they thought they were actually part of it. The characters are no more or less outlandish than anything that had already been produced for the Turtles. The difference between a character like Toxie and Muckman is nearly indistinguishable in concept. In total, Playmates produced nine basic action figures, five vehicles, and a deluxe 10-inch Toxie, all with toxic slime interactivity. Although technically, any toy can have slime interactivity, if you're willing. Toxic Crusader, it's Dr. Killamoth, the evil alien who wants to pollute the whole world. He's gonna smogify every tree in Traumaville, but look who's gonna stop him. It's Toxie, the trendy yet hideously deformed leader of the Toxic Crusaders. How does he do it? He's toxic but tasteful. This grime fighter really comes up with the works with his ever faithful mom. They're gross, but they're gonna clean up the world. Toxic Crusaders. Hideously deformed action figures and toxic waste each sold separately from Playmates. 
In April of 1991, Marvel Comics began a series of Toxic Avenger comics that would run for 11 issues into February of 1992 before that series was cancelled. In May of 1992, the series was relaunched as Toxic Crusaders to fit the marketing of the toy line and cartoon. The brand rollout covered the whole spectrum of entertainment media. Toxic Crusaders made its way to the NES and Sega Genesis, International Games released the Battle for Tromaville Toxic Crusaders board game, there were lunchboxes, Halloween costumes, and even a Colorforms playset. As hard to believe as it is, Toxic Crusaders was a legitimate mainstream brand. That such an adult franchise had become a genuine toy and cartoon property was as crazy as Robocop, Rambo, or Aliens doing the same thing which they had already done or were in the process of doing during the 90s. I guess the lesson here is maybe if you have a really cool science fiction or horror property, try it as a PG brand first, then if it doesn't catch on, you can always fall back on the adult market. Toxic Crusaders only lasted one season, one wave of toys before the brand would go back to being based on the Toxic Avenger. Troma Studios produced a fourth film in the year 2000 called Citizen Toxie The Toxic Avenger 4, still totally rated R. In 2008, the entire Toxic Crusaders cartoon series was released on DVD. However, it's also right here on YouTube from the Troma Movies YouTube channel. Be forewarned, a lot of the material on the Troma channel is highly inappropriate for viewers under 18 and some viewers over 18. I'm not sure I've properly stressed how not for kids the actual original movies are. They aren't. <laughs> Toxie was revisited by toy company Super 7 as part of their reaction line in 2017. He was available in both Toxic Avenger colors and packaging, as well as Toxic Crusaders coloring and packaging. But the story doesn't end there. In May of 2018, Lloyd Kaufman announced that a fifth Toxic Avenger movie was technically in production and would begin shooting as soon as Troma was able to bring the money together to make it happen. As of this video, no release date has been set. It wasn't the first R-rated film property to make the leap to cartoons, comics, and the toy box. It won't be the last. Gross-out humor, science fiction, and superheroes will always appeal to kids. Take that and a rating that prohibits them from watching it, and you've got yourself a winning combination for entertainment and developmental trauma. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you are old enough to have seen Toxic Avenger or, like me, young enough to have had Toxic Crusaders be your first exposure to the unique voice of Troma Entertainment. Did I already mention that Troma's library is totally not for kids? It's not for kids. Cut.